Shalom, Gabe Greenberg here, Rabbi of Congregation Beth Israel in New Orleans, Louisiana, studying with you this week the commentary of the Nitziv on Parshat Vayeshev, Genesis chapter 37, verse 12. Here we are at the beginning of the narrative of Joseph, uh, who will ultimately, uh, who goes to visit his brothers and is kidnapped by them, thrown into a pit and ultimately sold off into slavery. We open with verse 12. Joseph's brothers went out to tend to their father's flock. The word etzon, the flock, to tend to the flock, the word et has dots over it. And anytime a word in the Torah has dots or special markings of some kind, uh, the rabbis find meaning there. So here, the Midrash, which is cited by Rashi, says just that. Lirot etzon, to tend to the flock. Nakud al eight, there's dots over the eight. Shalo halchu, ela lirot et atzman. They really only went to tend to themselves. Not that they went to tend to the flocks, they went to tend to themselves. So what does that mean? According to the Nitziv, halchu lirot et atzman bitzon, hainu leechol mehem that really they went uh, to eat from the flocks. So they went out there uh, ostensibly to guard them, to tend to them, to let, them, to let the animals eat, but really it was the humans, uh, the brothers of Joseph, the children of Jacob, who eat from the animals. Now, why do we care about that? Because, says the Nitziv, this is an example of Avera, Goreret Avera, of one sin leading to another sin. He's going to argue that it was eating from the flock, which they uh, it wasn't the worst sin in the world, but it leads to something deeper. It really uh, precipitates the whole story uh, of Joseph ultimately uh, getting thrown into the pit and sold. How so? The Nitziv explains. He notes that there is a Talmudic passage in Tractate Chulin, Daf Dalid Amud Beit, which claims, Ein hasata ele ba'achila ushtia, that when someone is enticed to do something they would not otherwise have done, this happens through food and drink, wine, presumably, or alcohol of some kind. The Gemara over there uh, notes different passages in Tanakh where the term hasata, in, uh, enticement, comes up once in Chronicles, Divrei Hayamim, interestingly also in Job, uh, where God says to the Satan character, Vatisitenivo Livalo Chinam, God says to Satan, you, Satan, enticed me uh, to harm uh, Job needlessly. Now, the Gemara, that sounds weird to us, and the Gemara also wonders, what does it mean to use this term of enticement about God if we're also going to say that enticement comes through food and drink? Clearly, that does not make sense. The Nitziv makes of that whole back and forth in Hulin uh, a general notion that hasata lo ne'emar ela al pitui ledevar she'eno hagun, that in being enticed to do something uh, through food and drink uh, happens because it regarding actions that you would not normally have done were you thinking clearly and clear-headedly. Someone wouldn't do something necessarily. The food and drink lead you, they cloud your mind. You cloud your thinking and lead you to do something you would not normally have done. And he says that's exactly what happens here. The brothers would never have thrown Joseph into the pit had it not been for the eating and drinking. So he connects what happens in the story to the opening Midrash, that the fact that the Midrash claims that the brothers Lirot uh, Atatzman tended to themselves, which according to the Nitziv means they ate of their father's flock, clouded their mind, they ate, they drank, and caused them to treat Joseph in this way. But that doesn't mean that the Nitziv thinks that the brothers shouldn't have done anything to Joseph, not at all. In fact, the Nitziv 
uh, throughout the narrative seems to believe that the brothers were justified in acting malevolently towards Joseph. Here he just thinks that they wouldn't have had the chutzpah, the koach, the strength to actually try and kill him by throwing him into this pit, were it not then for the uh, traitors, the Yishmaelim who come by, who they ultimately sell Joseph to. He says explicitly just that. Shivteya shedanu mishpat Yosef lemito, the tribes, the, the brothers that judged Joseph worthy of death, Without a doubt, they believed that they were doing the right thing. How could they have believed they were doing the right thing to harm their brother? Later, the Nitziv, uh notes that he agrees with the commentary of the Sforno. The Sforno uh, writes at length, saying that based on Joseph's prior actions to them, they were justified in thinking that Joseph had it in for them. He had informed on them to their father, Jacob. He had lorded over uh, the fact that he was the chosen son. He has had these dreams where he says that you will be subordinate to me. So when the brothers saw Joseph coming that day, they were right on some level in thinking that Joseph meant them harm. So they wanted, they acted, it seemed, on some level out of self-defense, self-preservation. But, according to Nitziv, they would not have had the chutzpah to actually carry out uh, this harm against him were it not for the eating and drinking. As he says, Mikol makom lo matzu katam lev la'asot devar retzach biadam. They would not have been able to find the heart uh, to do this act of murder with their own hands, in lo ushtia were it not for the food and drink that they that they partook of when they went to tend to themselves, as our verse had opened, verse twelve, by saying. So the Nitziv here, uh, according to his general approach, does a couple of things. He uses a grammatical or midrashic. Uh, nuance or insight here, it's the dots over the et, to ask a, a surface level question, what does that mean? It means that they ate from the flock, but then takes that as a starting point to open up a broader question. And here he uh, relates to the Talmud, the Talmudic piece in Hulin about uh, what it means to be enticed does that and how that always happens through food and drink, and it makes us do things we wouldn't normally do. Uh, and also wants to uh, justify the actions of the brother. The Nitziv is invested, uh, heavily invested, in not wanting to uh, really um, blame the brothers or see them in a negative light through this story. He relies on the commentary of the Sforno as his major uh, proof text, as an earlier commentator who says similar, similarly uh, to his idea and uh, weaves it in to the broader story here in Parshat Vayeshev. Thanks, have a great week, and we will see you next time.